Hi everyone, I hope everyone had a gorgeous week. For this week we've done this tabletop. It's Rhodesian teak, or also known as sleeper. Old railroad sleepers this is made from. Not one of my favorite things to work with. It's a very splintery wood, very heavy, very hard on your tools. And I don't like sleepers. This is not my type of design. I don't like the design very much, but this is what I was given and this is what I was asked to do. For me it looks like a door laid on four legs. So the design is for me not very nice. But anyway, we're going to make it better. This used to be an old conference table. And we're converting it or changing it now. Reducing the size into a dining room table. I made it now 2.1 end to end. And it's a 1.9 wide. We've got about 600 off the ends in the length. And we've got that much off on the width. We then cut the planks off on the center piece. To make everything fit. Redone the holes. Put some coach bolts in the mitres. They are extremely heavy and difficult to do. Coach bolts is a mission. But this is strong as hell. It's very, very strong. At the moment, it's also extremely heavy. So I have to call my neighbor's cult next door every now and then to help me to turn or to move whatever I need to move. Or my wife also helps now and then. So thank you to the two of them. Our friend Kunrad is still off. He had a knee operation on Friday to fix his injured knee. So he will be off for the next two weeks. And I really miss that guy now. Promise you that. I started sanding. I'm going to sand this from an 80 grit right through to a 220 grit. Get a smoother finish. For a conference table, the rough surface is alright. But I think for a dining room table, we need to find a finish. So I'm sanding all of the high spots away, most of the filling that's everywhere, trying to reduce it and just get a better finish on it. On the legs I'm not going to do much, I'm just going to make them a little bit narrower to fit under our new tabletop. This was a hard week, it was a heavy lifting week, but I'm glad I'm this far. For next week we're going to do the loads of sanding, filling, filling all the little holes everywhere and then finishing it again. I'm going to stain it again with a teak stain before I varnish it. I'm going to give it a polyurethane varnish just for that extra little bit du durability. This is going to be nice but it's heavy, it's extremely heavy. So guys the limit of my mitre saw was about this. Can't do much more than that. And the mitre saw really worked very hard on this this week. To get the filler they used on these things off was a job on its own. These things is hard. I, it feels like an epoxy type of filler that they used. It's very, very hard. But I'm glad you this for. The worst of the work is now done, the heavy lifting is done, now it's the finishing. This is the nice time consuming work now, finishing and sanding, filling, sanding again, staining, varnishing. It's not so hard work, but we're going to enjoy it. Strong to Kunrat, I hope your knee heals very nicely, or quickly, I miss you. And then guys, stick to the end of this video. I'm going to share some of our good friend Emil's work that he's done on a vat that is bourbon vat that he's busy converting into a bar. And please comment, tell us what you think. Subscribe, and we we'll see you next week. Enjoy. So, guys, as you have seen in the introduction, we're working this week on a very heavy very big conference table this looks to me like all Rhodesian teak old railroad sleepers 
it's extremely heavy. It's very heavy. Luckily, Kunrat helped me to take the top apart. And uh, we won't be seeing him for the next two weeks. He had some bad luck. He injured his knee. And he's going for an operation on Friday to have his knee fixed. So we won't be seeing him for the next two weeks. So we're on the own for this one. I've taken out two other planks on the board. It was actually extra two planks on this board. And this is the nicest or the neatest four planks that's left. I just want to clean the joints between the boards. They routed it with an F joint for glue surface. And basically all the glue joints came loose. Because sleeper wood is very oily and dirty, wood glue usually never works on sleeper. My trick for working this, and as you'll see later, before I glue any sleeper, I clean it with acetone. I wipe down all the glue joints with acetone, and then I glue it with a proper waterproof glue, preferably one with a very low viscosity, in other words, very runny. But that you'll see a bit later. For now, I just want to clean up all these joints between the planks and see if we can get this top together with the four planks that we're going to use. Then we're going to cut off 600 millimeters off the end to make it a bit shorter. And then let's take it from there. Guys, I just want to show you it's a very nice F joint that they routed into it. And on this whole plank, I can only find one place where the glue actually adhered. So sleepers and normal white glue, they're not very compatible. That's why I usually, I'm going to clean this now with a scraper and some, I don't know, see what I can use to clean it. Make sure it comes together nicely. Then I wipe it with acetone. And then glue it. The acetone just to get rid of the oily stuff in the wood and to give the glue some time to set and actually penetrate the wood. I personally I really don't like working with sleep wood. I do this job because I've got lots and lots of respect for the guy who owns this table. He taught me a few life lessons that I still live by up to this day. And uh, that's the only reason why I accepted this job. Otherwise, I would have never touched sleepers. It's a horrible wood to work with. It never glues. It's always full of splinters. It's always too dry. Really hard on your machines. Not a nice wood to work with. But anyways, just to show you that there was no... The glue basically didn't do much on this whole glue joint. And that's between all six planks that was in here. They all came loose so easy. No effort, just came loose. Well, guys, as you can see, I've removed two planks and I've cut it a bit shorter. I still have to cut another 50 mil off just to square it up. I just cut it a little bit long so that I can do a final square. What I have to do now is put the borders back. And as you can see, they've used lots and lots of filler on these which I must first get rid of and then see if I can just tidy it up and make it a little bit neater and tidier they've stained the wood as you can see there so somehow I'm gonna have to match this stain because the top I can sand but the legs I'm not gonna be able to sand all of that off and restain the whole thing so I'll have to do a good match on this. So first let's clean up these borders. And then I'm going to start shaping and forming, miter them and see if I can fit them. To make that sure I've got this thing 100% square. I've measured it from this edge to my cutting edge, 1.88. Because I'm going to the borders we're adding. Is 111 millimeters, 111 millimeters, and I end up with a standard 2.1 for a dining room table. So what I've done is I've put my rail down, 
on the sides with my two rafter squares and make sure my edges on this side and on that side is square and then to double check I've measured from corner to corner and then from that corner to this corner So I can now cut this off and be sure that this is as square as possible. As you can see there's a chamfer right around the table so before I can start playing with the borders I must first copy the chamfer onto the edge that I've cut off. I've set the depth of my chamfer bit in my router and I'm quickly going to cut it. stinky with this. So guys after I squared up the table and chopped off most of the filler that was everywhere our mitis is not very nice now. So I want to try to use much less filler than what was in here so I'm gonna try and just get this one corner closer before I start cutting the mitis on the other two ends. So I'm just gonna remiter this make this mitre a bit longer because it also ended up short so if I can get this to a true 45 it should be much better as you can see guys much better mitre so after pulling it with a massive massive coach bolts that we're gonna put in here to strengthen this I think we'll close this mitre quite nicely there we are guys, I've got that end cut off. This piece is now the correct size. Our mitre is good, our distance is fine, so now I'm going to cut the mitre on the other side. And so one by one, we'll get them done. Just want to make sure I don't cut into any of the screws that's on the end there. Lucky, luckily for me, these, this is so heavy, I don't need to clamp it. days of struggle I've got the border beams cut I've got three corners very nice matching and doing very well but I'm backing with this corner as you can see the actual inside is higher than the outside so I still got a bit of a battle to fix this corner then I'm gonna start screwing and getting the border together turn the whole thing over fix this and screw 
the inside to the border. These beams are extremely, extremely heavy. And this top is going to be very heavy by itself. Firstly, I don't like the design very much. It looks like a door that somebody put legs on. It's not my type of design. But it's not my choice. Another thing that I want to show you is if you look at the filler that the people used. I don't know what they used, but it's hard as... It's, I think it's a resin type of filler that they use and it's very very hard and it took me ages to get rid of all this filler but I'm quite happy it came out quite nice and square now just to assemble it and get it all together guys to get the coach bolts in that we are using I'm first drilling a one and a quarter inch hole just to hide the head and to get the socket into and then after I draw the one and a quarter inch hole or in this case I think it's close to 38 millimeters or 32 millimeters sorry I then switch over to a 10 millimeter pilot that I extended and then I draw a hole into the mitre to make space for the massive, massive coach ball that we're putting through the corners. I've done the three corners now, got this last corner left, and I'm telling you this wood is so, so hard. It's a mission to draw, especially with a spade ball. But almost there, let's finish the last one. thicker spade bit and just in the first part I widen the hole to a thickness that will I don't want the thread to grab on this part I just want the thread to grab on the back part and then pull it together so I've then put a washer on it and we're gonna turn it in use the socket wrench Tighten it, yeah. Now that's fast. So guys, that's as far as we got with the tabletop for this week. Thank you for watching. Next week we'll do some sanding, staining, varnishing. Get this top done. So please stay tuned. I'm going to share some pictures with you from Emil, one of our guild members. That's converting a bourbon vat into a little mobile bar. And guys, please share more pictures. Ask the rest of the guild members and everybody to share some pictures. Show us what they're doing. Let's show the people what the Free State can do. Thank you very much. Okay.